Major League Fishing Cups are back and available on My Outdoor TV. Here we go. Start your free trial on MOTV.com to enjoy new episodes of Major League Fishing Cups now. Use promo code YT30. It's stressful from the time you get in the truck in the morning until the fourth guy catches that last fish. It just gets so intense, it's crazy. Your emotions go just the whole gamut. But when it gets down to the last one or two guys, you start fishing faster, you start getting out of your comfort zone. You don't know if you've got two hours left or if you have two minutes. Golly, that's a good Oh, thank you, Jesus. Are you kidding me? Oh, what do we need? We're getting closer, come on. General Tire's Major League Fishing is the USAA Patriot Cup from Kissimmee, Florida, presented by Berkeley. We're plenty early. We got enough time to take a nap. Lake Toho, been here several times. It can be tough. 13 pounds. We've got some crazy conditions. I mean, the wind is going to blow 25 all day. We're kind of in the middle of a tropical storm slash hurricane. Yeah, this was uh, not the greatest wind contingency plan I've ever seen. I may travel around in here and see where all the depths and drops are from my 30-minute deal. If you graph out in the middle, you'll see little depressions. Those are where the dinosaurs walked. <laughs> was that the footprints? <laughs> and we're about to have a little hurricane derby, hurricane party. We are sure in for an interesting day today. Welcome to General Tire's Major League Fishing. 18 anglers have escaped elimination here in Kissimmee, Florida. Today, nine will face off in sudden death round one. The first four to reach 13 pounds will earn their place in the championship round. Let's meet today's nine anglers. Qualifying out of elimination round one, he was your winner, Michael Neal. With a third place finish, Mike Iconelli. And finishing in fifth place, Ot Defoe. The winner from elimination round two, Jesse Wiggins. With a third place finish, Zach Burge. And the sixth place qualifier, Mark Rose. He finished in second in elimination round three, Scott Suggs. With a fourth place showing, Dustin Connell. And qualifying with a sixth place finish, Josh Bertrand. When looking to become a Major League Fishing Cup champion, these anglers need to be ready for anything. Michael Neal shows us how he prepared for the unknown in today's General Tire Anywhere is Possible. Here for the Patriot Cup in Kissimmee, Florida, and these cup events are just like General Tire Anywhere is Possible. You never know where we're gonna wind up, but it's Florida. Florida fishing is usually pretty simple. It's always been the same no matter what time of year I've been down here. So I've got three baits with me that I feel like I can advance on to the next round. A vibrating jig is my number one bait in Florida. It's been a staple for a lot of guys for many, many years. And you can throw it on braid or fluorocarbon, just depending on the cover you're around, but it's something you can throw through just about anything as long as you've got six inches of space to get it in through. So that's gonna be my number one bait, something I love to throw. Also in the fall, the bait seems to be very small in a lot of the country. Haven't been to Florida in the fall, but I expect the same thing here. So this small square bill crankbait, you know, a lot of these places have canals, rocks, moving water, things like that. It's gonna be a great option for covering water there. And of course, you can't come to Florida without some sort of punching setup. You know, an ounce and a half weight, creature style bait, heavy braid to get through the thick vegetation. Sometimes those fish like to bury up where you can't get to them with any other bait. Those are my three options. Looking forward to the Patriot Cup. With no practice and no information, the anglers only have 30 minutes to run the lake and try to formulate a game plan. For more information on the options they have available, let's send it out to Marty Stone with today's Lake Breakdown. Chad, this morning the anglers have arrived at a familiar foe in Kissimmee, Florida, Lake Toho. This is a lake where a lot of these anglers have fished many national events. 
but very few of them have fished this lake in the month of November. Today's zone starts at the northern reaches at Big Toho Marina, and it goes all the way south to slightly past Lanier Point in Big Grassy Island. This lake is known for three things this time of the year. The first, schooling fish in open water. They're gonna be difficult to find with all the wind and rain that we're gonna have today. The second thing this lake is known for is open water hydrilla bays throughout this particular zone. And those bays are productive and hold big fish. And the third thing that this lake is known for this time of the year is Shingle Creek and St. Cloud Canal. Both of these areas will have current in it. And anywhere you've got current in the fall of the year, it's going to hold fish. Today, the anglers are going to deal with high winds with 15 to 25 miles per hour out of the northeast with gusts over 40. There's going to be intermittent rain throughout the day. And if the anglers didn't already have enough to battle, they've got one more thing they're going to have to fight through. We've set today's target weight at 13 pounds. And from what I've heard, that's going to be low. This lake's fishing really good. Now, the most stressful round in bass fishing, it just got a touch more stressful. Don't blink. You might miss this one. Cue the misery. Time to go fishing. Woo! That rain's picking up right in time, guys. Golly. It is time to take off in the wind and the rain. Estimated time of arrival, now. Let's go. So here we are, we have a 30 minute ride around, uh, but you know what? We're not gonna utilize that ride around at all. It's dark, it's windy. I think it'd be wasting time anyway. My rule in major league fishing, especially in cups, is if there's ever a bridge, a bridge or riprap, that's where you have to start. So I know on this particular hole course we're on today on Lake Toho, there is a bridge right here with riprap. Riprap around the sides, deep hole under the bridge. And that's the whole deal with sudden death. You gotta jump on quick. So if you can come up with a hero or zero plan, that's the way to go. I don't know if there's any current flowing out of here. I highly doubt it. But, you know, you got shale beds and stuff that are kind of washed out from these places. So I'm sure there's a few fish around through here. We're going to sit here and watch for a minute for some activity. There's a couple guys going up into that creek right there. And, and I mean, hey, that's a, <laughs> a, couple, a couple guys in that creek are going to go out. So we actually fished heavy hitters here on uh, Kissimmee Chain earlier this year. And this particular area, the Shingle Creek, was a really, really hot spot. A lot of fish live in this creek and, and get caught in here. The only thing that's good about this is, well, I know there's fish that live in here, but this is super protective. Like, I can fish in here and not be spun out because of wind or something. I don't have to worry about it messing me up or affecting me. Just some grass, looking where the grass line is, and I'm gonna try to keep throwing that jerk bait. This is pretty good conditions for it, actually. This right here looks pretty good. I've caught them here before. But I'm just trying to find some good starting spots. In the past, I've been on Toho, and there's been a lot of fish that school up right here in this little, it's, a, it's a, just a flow. It's on the north end. It's a pinch point. Opens up right out there, and it opens up right out there behind us, and this is a good flow right here. As you can see, we got good grass. So. Man, this is as good as any. You know, I've got a punching rod ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably punch a, a bunker hog from Berkeley. Um, I've, you know, in the ride around, I noticed some really pretty green hydrilla mats. So, may, you know, we, we may end up fishing those a little bit. That's a great way to get a big bite. I don't think it's gonna take long for these guys to figure something out. There's just a lot of fish in here, so. The 13 pounds is nothing. That's like one fish here on Toho. So you could literally catch a 13, 14 pounder and be done. You'll find expert bass fishing know-how from Mercury MLF Pro Team Anglers at MajorLakeFishing.com backslash Mercury Pro Tactics. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. 
BMW trailer hitches, towing adventure. Yeti, built for the wild. Sonic, this is how we Sonic. And by Kubota, together we do more. I sure hope this pans out. <laughs> That's a pretty long idle to come all the way in here and, and not catch them, so. I hate doing this right in front of a tackle shop because they're probably going, that idiot, I'd be doing this, I'd be doing that. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the USAA Insurance Patriot Cup, presented by Berkeley from Kissimmee, Florida. It's sudden death round one, and nine anglers are on the northern section of Lake Toho, where they'll test their instincts in a game of speed. Today's target weight has been set at 13 pounds of bass. The first four pros to hit the mark will advance to the championship round to compete for the Patriot Cup trophy. The race to the championship begins now. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines in, start of the first period. We have started the sudden death round of the Patriot Cup on a very windy Toho. Hopefully, there's a whole pile of them sitting here. God, dog it. I don't know if that was a bite or what that was, but. Literally just broke him off the first cast. <laughs> Make sure you keep me up to date on that score tracker. Yes, sir. Please. I'm looking right now. 13 pounds is extra stressful. Scott, first angler on score tracker. Mike Iaconelli, one pound, one ounce. Imagine that. He was the first one on it the other day. Um, you know, we started in a place that I wanted to fish a bridge, and I decided to stop short of it and make a few casts with a vibrating jig. The way the current's blowing, uh, it sounded right. To get a bite on your fourth cast, it's not a big one, but to get a bite on the fourth cast is a really good sign. Where I'm fishing at is kind of bombed out with hydrilla and coontail. And I need to find somewhere that's clean. It's got like a clean edge. Because all this is pretty, pretty bombed out. Darn wind's already affecting pitches and everything. It's amazing how it comes under them docks. Today's anglers will need to adjust to these tough conditions if they want to be one of the four to reach the 13-pound target weight. Marty Stone breaks it down in today's Wiley X Eyewear, more than meets the eye. When anglers come to the Sunshine State, they've got dreams of being able to punch mats or flip into pitch the reed heads. But today, they can take those dreams and throw them out the window because of the wind and the cloud cover. And to me, these anglers have got three choices to make. First, seek the hard cover, whether it's marinas, boat docks, or bridge pilings. These are areas that can perform current breaks and these fish can pile into. The second is, don't fight the shallow grass. Instead, concentrate on the offshore hydrilla or the hydrilla that's on the outer edges of the Kissimmee grass. Use reaction baits that you can cover a lot of water. And third and finally, go to the current, whether it's Shingle Creek or St. Cloud Canal. Any time in Florida when you've got difficult conditions, don't fight it, but figure out the key areas that can be productive. These anglers are gonna to have to battle through these elements. And in my opinion, it's gonna be one of these three choices that's gonna allow them to be successful today in this sudden death round. If, we, if this wind gets up anymore, I don't like where my pick, where I started. There's a bass in there. I think it's so dark, it looks like a smallmouth. I don't think he's going to score. He might. He might. Come on, baby. I think he might. One pound even. <laughs> One pound closer to 13. Didn't take too long to get a bite in here. Pretty good sign. Run off a little pipe. One pound, one ounce. Yes. There's one. Twelve more. Water in Florida is just always kind of tannic looking and 
Chartreuse just seems to be my go-to with crankbaits down here. Should be pulling on that 15 ounce crap today, Dan. Come on, Mr. Boat Official. One pound, two ounces. One, two, all right. Mark Rose just took first, one pound, two ounce. Michael Neal's in fourth, one pound, zero ounce. Ain't gonna take long. Man, it's so shallow in here. Grass is shallow. I'm glad I tied on a little quarter ounce head on this swim bait. Just a little grass funnel right here. Some current blowing through it. So I tied some shad type baits on because that's what kind of place this is. It's a little feeding alleyway. Oh my God, I got him. I got him. <laughs> who tells, who, whoever tells you fishermen aren't athletes, they're lying. That's a good one, dude. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Let me see some of them older guys do it. I'm old and I just did that. Stay in shape, stay in shape. Yeah, this ain't gonna take long at all. Mikey went somewhere and landed on him. Sounds like. You never know what he could be doing. He could be at the boat ramp catching him off the seawall. I can't talk right now. <laughs> I'm like in shock. Not a giant, but he's kind of hooked a little bit weird, I think. Oh, yeah, he's hooked real weird. Oh. Oh. Josh, that will be a fish landing violation, two minute penalty. I'm all hooked and everything. Josh Bertrand just caught a one pound, 14 ounce. There's now five guys on score tracker. You're still in first. Mm. When, when it's this windy, things just don't happen easy. They don't come easy. You got, I got a Berkeley cutter in my jacket here. Before I do anything, I'm gonna wait. There's a good one. He about come off. Jesse Wiggins has caught his second fish. He's now in second place with two pounds, seven ounces. Got to try something real quick. If I get a bite on this, I feel like I could catch him quicker. Hmm. They're biting. Just not in here. It was. Don't you come off. Yes. I knew it felt like a fish. One pound, two ounces. Jesse Wiggins caught his third fish. He has three pounds, nine ounces in second. You are still in first, Mike. One more cast, I'll turn back, go down that bank, and we'll go back under the bridge. For whatever reason, it seems like that's better. I don't know. It looks the same, but I mean, all you can do is listen to the fish. Yeah, I'm Jack, man. There's some fish on this grass line. I just got to catch them. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. It's bigger there. Not big, but he's bigger. Yes. Get there quicker catching them that size. Dang, they're not wasting no time. One pound, 12 ounces. There we go. I get there a lot quicker catching them that size. We're only 30 minutes into period one, and six of today's nine anglers are already on the score tracker. Jesse Wiggins is taking advantage of the windy conditions. He holds the lead at five pounds, five ounces. The first four anglers to reach 13 pounds will advance to the championship round. And things are happening fast on Lake Toho. It's not looking good, boys. 
Not looking good. We're gonna have to move. No current in here, no fish. We can get out here and wind some stuff around a little bit. I bet you $100 I've caught more fish than anybody. I just gotta make sure there's scores. That one will score, though. He hit it like three times. One pound, 10 ounces. Not a giant, but scoreable. Keeps us on the right track. I don't think this one's going to last very long today. There's one. Look at that thing. That's a giant. Yeah. Head's bigger than mine. Give me eight pounds. Come on. Five pounds, zero ounces. Mike Acanelli, five pounds, zero ounces. He now has three fish for eight pounds, 13 ounces. It's only a matter of time before somebody caught a good one. Oh, boy. I'd love to see a five-pounder right about now. You know, when the cut weight is so small, you need some big ones. And that's a big one. Gives me confidence that what we're doing is the right thing. This is a black and blue vibrating jig, half ounce. Putting a little black and blue Berkeley chigger crawl on the back. Winding it real slow, right on the edge of these, these mats. One more like that and we're out. Hmm. Got him. It's, it's either a big one or a pike. Oh, it's a big old bass. Let me right there. Let me right there. Come here, baby. Come here. That's a good one. Oh, I barely got him. Yes. Yes. Two pounds, 13 ounces. Yes, that's a good one. Boom. He's almost done. That's frustrating. We're getting plenty of bites here, just not the right size. Well, Jesse's probably throwing a shaky head. I don't even know who's in second. The key today is, is fast, you know? There's no slowing down. You're going to have to find them fast and catch them fast. And you see that with Score Tracker right now. 13 pounds is not a big weight, so the thing I'm thinking about now is to not stop, because Florida fish can change a drop of a dime. They can change their attitude. So my, what I'm thinking now is just keep going. Don't stop. Don't slow down. All three of us know that there's enough fish right here to go out if I can just catch them. All right. We're going to do something. Yeah, when you got a 13-pound cut, you, you can't wait around. Not on a lake like this. We're going to go straight across the other side and get in some hay grass. I'm going to throw that swim jig for a while. That one would have hit whatever hit the water. Big, big. We in Florida, boys. We are in Florida. Look at that big, big, big. Oh, me. Two pounds, seven ounces. Not a giant, but decent right here. Michael Neal caught a two pound, seven ounce fish. He now has four fish for six pounds, seven ounces. He's moved into third place. Even those guys, I mean, they're getting some bites, but they're not just, it's not like they know where every bite they get's gonna come from by any means. Making a little change, just going to top water. Most of the fish that I've caught have hit my bait within the first four or five cranks, so they're not very far under the water. Just don't know if they'll come up and hit top water. I would think so. 
pretty good conditions for it. Just gonna give it a minute and see. Four more, come on. We'll weigh him. Come here, dude. One, one pound, zero ounces. <laughs> yeah! Look how dark he is. That's just a classic Florida bass. I've said that like three times this week, classic Florida bass. When you're from Arizona, they don't look like that. So it's exciting to catch one that looks like that. They're more exciting when they weigh about seven pounds. Fourth place caught a one pound fish. He's now up to two pounds, 14 ounces. It's not fast and furious, but we're getting bites, you know? One pound, two ounces. Another one towards the total. Definitely something to this. Just gotta keep slinging it. You can see how hard, I mean, that was just a little fish and still straightened everything out. Just a simple half ounce, double gold willow leaf spinnerbait. Something that I throw in the fall all the time is a spinnerbait. Evidently that works in Florida too. My gut's telling me, hey, there's not enough current, but, you know, in this wind, you don't have a million options. There are a couple other things we could do, and we've had one bite in here in 15 minutes, 10 minutes, so we'll give it a little longer. Sudden death's all about decisions and getting on them quickly, and so far, made the right decision and got on them quickly, so. I'd like to get out of this before the first period ends. We'll see fish are in here to do it, no doubt. My Outdoor TV is your home for every exciting moment of the 2022 MLF season. Boom! Every episode, including live events. <laughs> yes, sir! Try it free at MyOutdoorTV.com. Use promo code YT30. Hello, I'm Jamie with Experience Kissimmee. With the lush vegetation and lakes all around the area, it's no wonder Kissimmee is home to plenty of fish for major league fishing. And since the average temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, you can enjoy all of your favorite outdoor activities all year round. Just take a look at it, some of the places we offer. Wild Florida is an all around outdoor adventure spot for all families. Near the headwaters of the Florida Everglades, this attraction gives visitors unique experiences, such as meeting a sloth, greeting a giraffe and other safari animals during a drive-through safari ride, seeing alligators up close on an airboat tour, and many more animal encounters. Orlando Tree Trek Adventure Park is a great way to get out in the great outdoors and challenge your family to some thrilling obstacles. These courses aren't for the faint at heart. You'll experience Kissimmee from heights you've never seen before from a giant 425-foot zip line and aerial dares, even kids' courses. This is a place for the whole family to get up and moving in the fresh air. Celebration Town Center is a must visit when you come to Kissimmee. This quaint town was originally built by the Walt Disney Company and is now a charming area full of hidden gems. From delicious eateries like Columbia Restaurant and Celebration Town Tavern, to outdoor sites that can be enjoyed by walking the forest path or biking around the picturesque houses and golf courses. Vacation homes are just one way to stay and see everything Kissimmee has to offer. After all, it is known as the vacation home capital of the world. There are more than 50,000 homes to choose from and you can decide whatever house you want based on your style. Whether you're looking for a private pool in the backyard or a laser tag arena, there's a house to accommodate your every need to make you feel at home with the amenities and services of a luxury resort. There's so much more to do in Kissimmee, and you can discover it all at experiencekissimmee.com. You're welcome anytime, and we hope you visit us real soon. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the USAA Insurance Patriot Cup, presented by Berkeley from Kissimmee, Florida. All right, we're about to go into big fish mode. Like, I, I, I've been trying to catch <laughs> keepers, but it's hard for me to catch keepers, so I'm about to go try to catch a couple five-pounders on frog or flipping. One pound, zero ounces. Boy, I'm on them one pounders. It's gonna take me a, it's gonna take me a minute to get there. They're only a pound. I don't have anything to spare, but I'm thankful they were both had that last ounce, that's for sure. Every ounce will count in today's sudden death round as nine anglers race to the 13-pound target weight. 
Jesse Wiggins needs just under four pounds. And Ike is within striking distance after scooping up a five pound Berkeley Big Bass. The top three pros are hoping to close it out before their momentum swings in the opposite direction. It's about to go off, guys. It's about to go nuts. You can just feel it. Guys are going to start going out, and there's going to be one or two spots left. And these dudes that are dormant right now are not going to stay dormant. That was on a jerk bait in the mouth of this little canal. I'm up here on the north end of the lake. If this works, I can, this is something I can run. All right, let's finish this thing. One little wad of them, and it's, I can finish it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, you get an early start like that, you get a rhythm of what you need to do, and then you just look for stuff that looks the same. You know, this is uh, outside of the mats. We got deep water. It might be a little too deep here, to be honest with you guys. I figure that base on right here makes a good edge. I mean, you can see where it's matted right there. I guess I'm going to have to go back down yonder. I'll give us about five more minutes. Fix and go the honey hole, boys. Nope, nope, nope. Mudfish. Golly. Nasty sucker, man. There he is. If he ain't snagged, it feels like a good fish. It is. Yes. One pound, five ounces. Oh, yes. I didn't think I was ever gonna get another bite. I thought you was my bad luck for a minute. I was fixing to tell you to leave. Jesse Wiggins has caught his seventh fish. He now has leads with 10 pounds, eight ounces. That boy's got it figured out this week. Two pounds, eight ounces is your magic number. I should get one right there. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's not going to be over with in the first period. There's some fish here. Now they just kind of quit biting, but it's just a grass line at the mouth of a big bay. Wind's hitting it good. I mean, there ain't no reason I shouldn't be able to catch two more fish here. Man, that's big. Stay on, baby. Stay on. Please stay on. Don't come on, don't come on. Don't come on, I ain't wind. Be a bass. Yeah, that's a bass. One pound, six ounces. Oh, yes. One pound, two ounces. One, two ounces to spare, baby. More than one there. Get the little ones knocked out. Maybe there'll be a big one. Florida, you either catch big ones or little ones. You don't catch a lot of a lot of three and four pounders. Be a bass. Oh yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Oh yes, it's a good one. Sorry. This violation, two minute penalty. Jesse Wiggins caught a fish, one pound six ounces. He's now at eleven pounds fourteen ounces. Well, we'll have most likely one out in this first period. Very easily, too, but I don't think it's going to be over with. It's a St. Croix 6-9 Legend Tournament. And you can see the tip, how it's got, it's got a soft tip, but it's got enough backbone down here to where you see how just the tip is bent. Oh, Jesse throwing a shaky head for sure, guaranteed. I know exactly where he's throwing it at, that bridge, because he likes fishing right there. Quantum Smoke S3. Eight to one year ratio, and that's what's catching them. I gotta catch one or, I think one more, or possibly two, but it's been good so far. I'm antsy, dude. I know I'm around the, the, the two that get me out, you know? I just, I want the bites. Get it over with. Oh, it's, it's not a bass. Not a bass. Dang it. Is it? It may be a bass. Oh, yeah, it's a nice bass. Ain't it? Yeah, it's a bass. Yes. Yes. That sucker jumped like a freaking pike. It's game over if I land him, though. 
Ball game, baby. We're out. We out, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Started horsing him. Boom, baby. First out, first period. God, I don't get to catch him often. I feel like Jacob Wheeler out here whacking him. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Boom. Yes. It jumped. I thought it was a freaking, not a pickerel, but a daggum snakehead. But he just, because he jumped like two times and didn't even hit the water, but that's it right there. Mm. Love you, jerk bait. Love you, Florida. Yes. Four tractor update. First angler to advance to the championship round, Jesse Wiggins. Reached the target weight. He's got 14 pounds, 10 ounces. Well, it didn't take too long. We get to go home for it rains, baby. That's what I'm talking about. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by Berkeley, your fish, our science. Wiley X Eyewear, go confidently. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Favorite Fishing, the future of fishing. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the USAA Insurance Patriot Cup, presented by Berkeley from Kissimmee, Florida. Ball game, baby. We're out. We out, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. That boy's got it figured out this week. That's it right there. Mm. Love you, jerk bait. Love you, Florida. Yes. Jesse Wiggins is the first angler to cross the 13-pound target weight. He's heading to the championship round. Marty Stone is with the man of the hour for today's Yeti Cooler Talk. Dude, you're on fire. Won your elimination round, and then come out here and you're the first man out in sudden death. What's going on with Jesse Wiggins in Florida? I don't know. The It's, it's actually, I come down here knowing that I wanted to throw a jerk bait on the, because you get to Florida and there's tons of grass. And if you can find a grass line, Usually there's fish on it, and the jerk bait just catches them down here. I've just learned it don't really catch a bunch of giant fish, but it catches the scoreable bass. So what went through your mind this morning when you showed up at the ramp? We got Tropical Storm Ada off to the southwest. Extreme conditions, even for you guys out here. And then we give you a target weight of 13 pounds. We pulled in this morning, and I'm like, oh, Lord, here we go. But I knew that jerkbait bite would be good, and I've caught them down here just conditions just like this on that jerkbait. And so when they gave us the map of the, the zone where it was cut out, the place where I was wanting to fish was semi-protected, you know, it wasn't but just a, a good ripple on the water. And uh, I thought, well, if, I, if the fish are there, I'll be able to fish it fairly easy, and they were there. First cup was a struggle for you, self-admitted, right? Second cup right now, you win elimination first man out in sudden death. Dude, you got momentum. What's it feel like going into the championship round? I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited now. I mean, I, I took out some frustration when I caught that fish to go out, because it's been a rough year, and just to catch it and go out, and especially ahead of all these guys, as good as they are, as much history they have on this lake. So it's just, I can't even really put it into words, but it's been awesome the last couple days of fishing. Jesse Wiggins showing the boys how to get it done down here in the Sunshine State. Got a lot of momentum heading the championship round. Only three spots remain in the championship round, and Mike Iaconelli and Mike O'Neill are on deck to be the next two out. The bottom six anglers are still trying to get the ball rolling on Lake Toho. However, Wiggins has just proven how fast it can go down. Well, that was quick and easy for him, man. Unbelievable. At the rate it's going, though, it don't look like it's gonna happen. Unless somebody catches like a seven pounder, it ain't gonna happen quick, so I got time, I'm good. Four places, like three pounds, four pounds. Three pounds. One bass. We good. Fish hit it as soon as I hit the water, too. One pound, seven ounces. No big ones in here. There's got to be one somewhere. Mike was caught 10 pounds, so there's a good chance he's been in here all all morning so far, so I mean, it tells us that there is fish in here. We're just obviously either not doing the right thing or wrong color or something. Been a minute since I had a bite. Just beginning to wonder. I mean, if I if I were to guess by looking at him up there fishing, he's right on the rocks, so he's probably paralleling a little crankbait or something.
Zach, I've got you a score tracker update. Michael Neal's caught another fish. He's now at 11 pounds, one ounce. We're obviously just not holding our mouth right. <laughs> He's caught 11 pounds. We ain't caught the first pound yet. He's right in front of us. I want to go over there and tie a white swim jig on and go through that Kissimmee grass, but before whoever that is behind me gets up here, but still getting bit on this, hard to put it down. You need one pound, 15 ounces to reach the target weight. The bad part is I've just caught one fish over two pounds, so I'll probably have to catch two. If I find out he's coming through here throwing a net rig or something, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah, that's a fish. It's a big fish, I think. He ain't big, but I think he's big enough. He ain't in some grass. One pound and one ounce. <laughs> I love them. I love them so very much. Can't get another bite, guys. I don't know. I'm trying. I promise. The good thing is I've got a little something figured out. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be enough to get it done quick enough, but let's just catch a 9.5 and call it good. I don't think he's a 115. One pound, 13 ounces. <laughs> Two ounces. But that fish is so dark. I mean, they look like smallmouth, some of them. Pretty fish. One bite, one scoreable bass. Michael Neal is now two ounces away from reaching the target weight at 13 pounds. He has 12 <laughs> pounds, 14 ounces. Two ounces. And he's got seven minutes to catch one in this period. <laughs> Six and a half. Sorry. Said <laughs> so Michael must be throwing a little road runner or something, a little beetle spin. Something dumb. As many fish as I caught on this swim jig the other day, I thought I had the color dialed. One scoreable bass can happen any turn of the reel. Yeah, I just I can't get nothing going now. I had a nice rhythm and it all disappeared. How do you fish two and a half hours on this place and don't catch one? I guess I'll just run around like I did at that other place until I get a bite. Uh, Mike Iconelli caught a one pound, zero ounce. He is now nine pounds and 13 ounces. Come on, fish. Don't make me sit through a break. Four, three, two, one. Lines out, end of period one. Well, not a good period. You know, period one just was period one. I tried to stay close this morning, tried to catch some fish right there where we took off from, just didn't work out. Caught several little ones. Just another typical Major League Fishing tournament for me. Don't get a bite in the first period. <laughs> Only one guy out so far. We've got three more spots to fish for. I mean, a couple guys are super, super close, but I've seen that happen plenty of times where those guys get hung up being that close. So I'm, I'm still completely in this thing. Didn't want to have to go into this break, but fish are here and they're biting, so just stick it out and hope for one more scoreable bass. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. Being that we were fishing in a hurricane, instead of where we would normally go back to the rendezvous point, we would just power pull down right where we were at and have a 15 minute break rather than a 30 minute break. I mean, it was getting pretty rough. Wind advisory coming out at this time, and Major League Fishing is all about being safe. And with this format, it was awesome just to be able to power pull down and stay right there instead of having to run back to the rendezvous. I felt terrible at the end of the first period because I hadn't caught a bass. So I wasn't very happy about that. But I knew I was in an area that was producing fish. Michael Neal was just several hundred yards up in front of me, and he had caught some. and. I knew that I was in the right place to get bites. I just needed to make some adjustments. Tried to formulate a plan, because period one, oh my gosh. 
I did catch two bass. I caught two bass. They were about that big. In two and a half hours. I was thinking about my C and D plan, and I already had those in my mind, but the right thing to do was to continue with this little worm and fish in this marina. While our pros prepare for a rainy period too, let's take a look at the score tracker. Michael Neal is our must-add point position leader and only needs two ounces to join Jesse Wiggins in the championship round. With Ike just over three pounds from the target weight, the rest of the field will need to find quality bites if they want to survive to fish another day. We had a great start to the first period, and then it really just died on us. It fizzled. We tried to expand that pattern. It didn't work. Uh, late in this period, we came into the marina. We were able to pick up at least a one-pounder. So we're going to start here. I, I mean, I don't know what it is. That first period is terrible for me. You know, if you're not getting bit on today, on a day like today, when 13 pounds is the target weight, you cannot sit around. You've got to keep moving. We've got to find a school of fish. We are about to start the second period right here. I don't know if this game will go past the second period. Three, two, one, lines in. Get this over with. It's starting the second period as the rain begins to come down hard on us. I need to figure out a way to catch 13 pounds real fast. I think I'm going to have a wet butt. Too late now. One time it really rains hard, I don't put my bottoms on. <laughs> One pound, eight ounces. You notice it's just a little backup if you're in trouble. Anywhere in the country, marinas are a great place to fish. There's just a lot going on. There's constant life in here. There's bluegill. These fish get fed. The guides come in here, and there's just a lot of activity. Mike Iaconelli, he is now at 11 pounds and 5 ounces. All right, so we shoot for fourth place. Fourth place is Aunt Defoe with 4 pounds and 3 ounces. All right. Stupid things with teeth. I hate you, because you hit so good, you pull so hard, but yet you're not what I'm after. Fish landing violation, two minute penalty. I lost my balance. I didn't mean that. Score tracker update. Mike Iaconelli just caught a fish, moving him to 12 pounds, 11 ounces. Both in the same boat now. You know, with the cut weight so low, with us being so close, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of playing safety here. This is a marina. It's one of the best places you catch fish. And here's the other thing. Listen to me. These are casts nobody will make. Our guys, yes. I mean, guys at MLF, you know, they'll make it. But the average fisherman that comes in here is not making that cast. Sometimes that's what you got to do. You know, you got about a 50-50 chance of landing them, and we landed that one. Oh, he's right there, too. We got three guys right there. All right, let's run up here to this fish attractor. We're not, we're just going up to that white buoy right up there. Don't you come off. I don't think he'll do it. He just caught one. Who did I? One pound, one ounce. <laughs> Finally, he's not much, but he makes it count. The road to 13, 14 pounds has begun. I can't even remember what we're supposed to be going to. One pound, five ounces. Right. Nope, that ice. Michael must be done. The sudden death and the elimination round, we've had good conditions for what I want to do. I like to wind, especially in Florida. I don't like to, you know, pitch a, a stick bait around or punch mats and stuff. So hopefully, championship round, have the same kind of conditions, 
feel like I got a good shot. Oh my goodness. you some of that. <laughs> oh, me. Again, little bitty worm. He ought to be nine pounds, and he's six pounds, one ounce. He just ain't got much right in his belly. Also, another update, Mark Rose has moved into fourth place. He just caught a six pound, two ounce bass. <laughs> he has seven pounds, four ounces. That'll work. Those are game changers. Oh, me, I can't believe it. A little bitty worm. Well, it looks like we're gonna be out of this quick. There he goes. That's the, that's the fish. That's a good one. <laughs> Yeah! 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 Man, Ike's right there. It's hard, it's hard to leave, because he's getting bit right here. One pound, 15. Yeah! Finals, baby. Mike Iaconelli just caught a one pound, 15 ounces. He is now at 14 pounds and 10 ounces. He is out. And I ain't got nothing. It's a big moment for me. I'm really, really bad in Florida. I've had a great career. This is potentially my last MLF Cup I'll ever fish in my life. To just make the finals mean so much to me. I want to thank all my sponsors and fans, everybody watching. Look at all these guys watching right now. Thank you for supporting me for all these years. It kept me going for 25 years. I think it's time for a break. Thank you, Bass. Yeah! Now I gotta figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing. Mike Iaconelli is heading to the championship round. His last four fish came from underneath Big Toho Marina, as you can see in today's favorite fishing overview of the day. Yeah! 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 When it's meant to be, it's meant to be. When I swung them, look at this. The line broke. Six pounds has in Florida. Not a good idea. <laughs> yeah! Ike is the third angler to cross the 13 pound target weight, leaving only one spot to advance to the championship round. However, Ike isn't the only one making noise in today's sudden death round. Mark Rose just landed a six pound, two ounce Berkeley Big Bass and Zach Burge is quietly making his way up the score tracker. For more on that, here's Marty Stone for today's Six Hour Success Insight. Sudden death always has a unique pace about it, and Jesse Wiggins started this show with a bang. Now we've got three anglers that's reached the target weight of 13 pounds, and this field is sort of taking a pause, a reset. Mark Rose, though, served notice with a 6-2. He's got everybody interested again today and got the foot back on the pedal. But the one angler I'm looking at is Zach Burge. He's went from zero to making some noise in this second period. He's up the St. Cloud Canal, same area that Michael Neal was in. And we know Burge is one of the best current, AKA river fishermen in the business. This field has got some work to do for the one of these remaining anglers to reach that target weight of 13 pounds. There's a pause, there's a reset. Everybody's got a chance, but I like Burge's move. Change colors, something a little bit brighter on. Something I can kind of float through this grass coming down through here. Came back up here where we started, and there's just a lot of flow right through here. It's good high drill -a line, and uh, I just pitched up there by one of them clumps of grass. Six pounder eats it. So we're gonna keep doing this a minute. He missed it and came right back and got it. <clears throat> I 
One pound, seven ounces. That was cool. He missed it, and I just kept it, kept it trucking, and he smoked it again. How many has birds caught so far? Four. Four. He must have caught two pretty quick. A one three and a one seven. I just need some better quality ones. I need a three pounder, or four pounder. I'm just trying to flip up like an eight right now. But man, wouldn't it be nice to flip him up? Eight and a half. Doink. I'd say it's a fish land oh, violation. Oh, Jesus. Two minute penalties. But he is in the boat. <laughs> Woo! Boy, I mean, just by. One pound, five ounces. Just by the hair of his chinny chin chin did he land in the boat. Oh, them was some <sighs> cat like. I was going for him. Why did I quit doing this? I came back, saw a little groove, catch a scoreable fish. Why did I quit? I don't know. We're about to turn around. I thought I'd give it just a little bit. I mean, I would think if there's not grass, they would be up on the bank because they've got no protection. Just tucked right in behind a rock or something, and whenever it should come by, like that one right there, I mean, they should be just coming out and crushing it. Give me one bite. Tell me that they're out here. You can do it in two or three bites out here. Why can't they just blow this frog out of my hand? Ooh. Stay on there, baby. Stay on there. One pound, seven ounces. Yes. Yes. Let's do that a few more times. The only braid I got is on a medium heavy rod. I'm putting it on a heavy. Hot just caught another fish. He now has six pounds, 15 ounces. Mm. And I got what? Seven, four. Yes, let's do that a few more. I could about see my bait. I could, could see my blade starting underwater, and it just goes dark. I'm going to go up here just another 40, 50 yards or so. It's not over. <laughs> but it is looking pretty slim right now. <laughs> hey, sometimes it bees like that. You get out here and go bass fishing, you don't catch no bass. <laughs> it is what it is, but we ain't giving up. No updates. Why you got to scare me like that? Honestly, just you breathing right now scares me, OK? Just so you're aware. <laughs> Baby. Mm hmm Yes, thank you, Lord. One pound, eight ounces. Pound and a half. Another pound and a half. Every now and then, you got to have Mary. Well, that's what we're doing. One pound, six ounces. Well, that joker crushed it. I kind of thought I missed him. So I need, what, four, nine? Yes, sir. Hmm. Come on. Let's just do that in one good one. Oh, crap. Get your big old hiney up in here. I told y'all it ain't over, Hammers. I told y'all it ain't over. Three pounds, one ounce. It ain't over. It ain't over. You gotta hurry. Get on something. I need to find a school. It got me off on a punching deal, thinking that might work. I guess I just need to stay back and cast to the edge. It just ain't over. Come on, big girl, eat it. My Outdoor TV is your home for every exciting moment of the 2022 MLF season. Boom! Every episode, including live <laughs> events. Yes, sir! Try it free at MyOutdoorTV.com. Use promo code YT30. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. 
Squincher. Hydration that works. Six Sour. Never settle. Kissimmee, Florida. Experience vacation nirvana. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. Punching is not the deal. I don't know what is, but it ain't punching. Six anglers are fighting for the last ticket to the championship round, and Mother Nature isn't making things any easier. Beautiful day. Oh, the like a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, it is. 13 pounds is the line to cross, and the bites can't happen fast enough for Ot Defo. Mark Rose and Zach Burge are right on his heels, and Dustin Connell just dropped a three-pounder on the scales. With the quality of fish swimming in Lake Toho, fortunes can change with just one bite. They're giving me a chance, and I can't do nothing with it. Well, this right here might be a heck of a catch if I get him out of there. We probably should have stayed at that ramp all day long. I know it's kind of, it, it hasn't happened for us, but Ike went out basically just fishing right there. I'm tempted to just go live or die back over there. This is not really right. It's not got deep enough water. It doesn't really lay right. It's not over. I told y'all it ain't over. It's just not. One pound, 10 ounces. Look at that little tail he's got. He got something going on with him like a gator done got him. That's what I'm talking about. It ain't over. Fat lady ain't sung yet. She might have some like catches a six pounder. <laughs> Dustin Connell's caught another fish, one pound, 10 ounces. He now has four pounds, 11 ounces. Unreal, that's just unreal. I'm, are you serious? Unreal. That's my best Dustin Canale impression. All right, you got 15 minutes to end of the period two. I came back in this creek. I started in here, but I didn't come on up in here, and I feel like there's more current the farther you go, you know, you come in here. At the mouth, it wouldn't really flow in that much. And there's just enough flowing through here that I think you can get some bites and we're in like a little bend of the creek. So anytime you have a little bend like that, you're gonna have a little funnel, like a pinch point, there's gonna be more current. One pound, seven ounces. One seven. A little closer. How many times have I put this on, took you taking it off today? 12, 15. Something like that. Well, we're almost back up here where we caught the first one. It's just a little, uh, all it is is a little funnel. Almost a drain. There's an island right there and a hard line right here, and it just gets real thin. The hydrilla mats up on both sides, and it's sparse out here in the middle. And I think this shad just can get in here and get out of the weather a little bit, and bass just get in this little alleyway. It ain't over. It's not over. Hit me. One pound, 11 ounces. Eleven, it ain't over. One pound, 14 ounces. That's about like the one I love. Dang, I'm so mad. I come in here right off the bat this morning, and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna be too smart for my own good, and then I left. I could have done went out in here. He's the one that's scared me right now, just to be quite honest. I don't think he's gonna make it. I think he's gonna be the life story for me. One pound, zero ounces. <laughs> you need six pounds and 10 ounces 
to hit the target weight. That's one bass. Like a legitimate bite. Come on. That's all I need to catch is like four pounds, nine ounces. Yes, sir. Score. All right, the foes just caught another fish, one pound, three ounces. Moves him back into fourth place with nine pounds, 10 ounces. He didn't like me being ahead of him, did he? You're three pounds, six ounces out of reaching the target weight. If I could catch one decent fish today, I'll be there. One decent fish. Three, two, one. Lines out into period two. There's enough fish, I think, right in here for us to go out. I just, I can't really get them dialed in. I'm gonna change some baits up. I'm gonna put a little more natural color worm on, like a watermelon. See if that helps. Probably do or die right here. There's a group of fish in here, though. I just lost one on a crankbait, so we'll see. The problem is the wind's got it so stirred up, so you make about one cast out of every 10 that something doesn't get on your bait. Um, I'm having to really, really, really fight it. I'm having to reel it really fast, but I'm having to really fight the bait. Well, that was a better period overall as a whole, but we got started too late. If I put my head down, I can get the bites. I'm still one bite out of the cut, you know? So that's a big deal, just being one bite away from that cut. Anything can happen if you get that one bite. So we'll see. We got one more period. Uh, well, I messed up. I should have came in here earlier, but <laughs> it is what it is. We still got time. I mean, there ain't a lot of movement. I can easily catch two, three pounders and make it, you know? So we'll see. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing for the USAA Insurance Patriot Cup, presented by Berkeley from Kissimmee, Florida. These things are good. <laughs> they, they really are. It's sudden death round one on Lake Toho, and the six remaining anglers are in the final break of the day. Uh, all of us are within just a few bites of finishing this thing out. I never would have thought it would have taken this long to catch 13 pounds here. So we're going out in this last period. I've been running around for the last two hours. The last entire last period, I hit 10 different spots. I can't be running around with the motor if I have any chance here. I need to have my bait in the water. As long as I get at least three pounds and six ounces. Yep. In the quickest way I possibly can. One more period to go, but as you can see from the score tracker, the target weight of 13 pounds could be reached in a matter of minutes. Ot Defoe and Mark Rose are in prime position, but the rest of the field are closing in quickly. The championship round is on the line but only one more will earn their shot to compete for the Patriot Cup trophy. Well, it's gonna be a tight race until the end. All right, last period. The last period heroics. We shall see. I need like six pounds. Let's get it. Six, Final period. Five, four, I need three, three six. two, one, lines in. Let's get it done. Lines in. Let's go catch seven pounds. Here we go. Last period. Bertrand, let's get it together, buddy. It's up for grabs. We're going to stay in this little gut right here for a little while. I feel like there's enough fish to go out in here. Let's get it done. One, two, or three fish. I do not care. I guess it technically could even take me four, but that'd be so stressful. I don't know why more of them don't come up and just stroke that thing being right on the surface like that. I don't know if it's a bass or a toothy critter. It's a bass. One pound, 12 ounces. And no time. No time to do nothing but fish. I can't believe I've not got a bite. I mean, there's good, good current rolling out of this, 
This goes into the canal back here. Got an update for you. Mm -hmm. Mark Rose caught a one pound, 12 ounce fish. He now has 10 pounds, seven ounces. He's moved back into fourth, moved you to fifth. He needs a two something. Yeah. Mark Rose has 10-7. 10-7. Yeah, he's, he's probably two away. The quality that everyone's been catching today. I just had what I feel like is a pretty good one on. Well, I had one on a swim bait that felt like a good chunk, but that one there was a good one. Broke him off on a spinning rod, little worm. I had my up by my knot, I had a little Burr in my line and my braid. Probably should have fixed that. It's a bass. I hope you stay on. It's going to be a bass. Stay on. Stay on there, baby. He's enough. Oh, Lord Jesus, let him be enough. Let him be enough. One pound, six ounces. Dang. Two pounds, 14 <sighs> ounces. Dang it. So close, so close, so close. Thank you, Lord. But now I still need one more. Man, I still need one more. Come on, baby. It never fails. A cast after I catch one, something gets on my bait. It never fails. He never make two casts. Hot Depot just caught a two pound, 14 ounce bass. Dang. That brought his total to 12 pounds and eight ounces. Good job, Hot. Uh oh. His last fish was 214. Woo. Gotta hurry. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the USAA Insurance Patriot Cup, presented by Berkeley from Kissimmee, Florida. Pouring the rain, wind blowing, the sun shining. Welcome to Florida. It's a sunshine state even when it rains. This lake always provides me with a little excitement. Rose, you're a buddy of mine, but I really want to beat you right now. I mean, I really, really, really want to beat you. The rain is falling over Lake Toho, but the tension is soaring for the remaining six anglers fighting for the final ticket to the championship round. Only eight ounces separates Ot Defoe from victory. However, Mark Rose has one decent bite from stealing his thunder, and Scott Suggs has been steadily gaining ground. Over an hour and a half remains in period three, but at this point, time could be irrelevant. Come on, one pounder, <laughs> please. Please, one pounder. Come on, six pounder, seven pounder, something. Oh, you nearly got me. Two pounds, six ounces. Josh Scott Suggs just caught a two pound, six ounce bass, making his total nine pounds, five ounces. He's moved to sixth place. He's got a chance. If I just got them other two, I'd be right there. Dang it. Need a five pounder. That'd be a dang miracle. If we had a uh, 10 ounce minimum, I'd be right in the running. 11 ounces. All right, non scoreable. Thank you. I don't know why there's not one laying right there. You'd think there'd be one right in behind that grass patch. 
I'm done. I'm done here. Well, we're going to get on this stuff, and I'll punch this stuff, try to catch a big one. I just can't believe that that caught that one really good one out here and ain't had another bite. I'm kind of working my way back out here to it. It was at the mouth. I really figured up in there where the, these little channels were back together, where the current's even faster is where it would have been best. That's what, one, four, five. God, look at that. Look at that swirl. Didn't get him. God, that fish knocked the fire out of it. Two pounds, 15 ounces. Getting closer, come on. Now we need a four pounder. Come on. As I was saying, that's like seven now that I've missed for some unforeseen reason. You are still sitting in seventh place. Ott Defoe is still in fourth. Well, 13 ounces, non-scorable bass. Mm, this is so stressful. All you need is a stinking bite. Giving all these other guys a chance. Just catch a one pounder, be over with. You need three pounds and 11 ounces. Mm, that's one fish, baby, come on. That's a fish landing violation, two minute penalty. You need two pounds, nine ounces. Please be a pound. I don't think he's gonna be. Three pounds, four ounces. Get him in the boot. We might have just done it. One pound, zero ounces. <laughs> Yes! One pound bass, baby! Yes! Dude, I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. Yes! Dude, that's what I needed was a one pounder and I caught a stinking one pounder. I've never been so excited for a one pound bass. Ot Defoe has caught another fish, one pound. He has 13 pounds, eight ounces. But it was after me. That is what a second championship in a row looks like. You are the most beautiful little Florida strain largemouth bass I've ever seen in my life. I need, I, I gotta take a picture of him. I'm taking a picture of this little bass before I let him go. Mark Rose is showing 13-11. I got up and looked at it right, I mean, the second after you weighed it, and it said 120 and 30, 30 seconds, I think. Somewhere right in there. I think that's what I called in. So they're going to have to look at the tape. I'm going to take a happy one. And I'm going to take a sad one. OK, I'm letting him go. Well, I caught one, too. So we're going to go back and check the poles, make sure Everybody was doing what they were supposed to do in Iowa, Pennsylvania, Nevada. But when, when you entered it, they both popped up at the same time. Yeah, so it was not there. OK, and they both popped up at the same time, so. Yeah. Come on, all right. He doesn't want a cup this year, hadn't he? Yep. Share a little bit. Be a good sportsman, all right? We've been fishing hard. But I'll be honest, that put us out of our misery right there. This lake has got my number, and uh, I don't know. I need to put a little time in here, and, and uh, you know, it'll click eventually. But man, this is the third time this place has kicked my butt. So that's frustrating. 
tough day of fishing, man. You know, it took these guys all day to catch 13 pounds. The guys that went out early, Jesse and everybody else, you know, it's just, uh, I feel like I'd have had another 15 minutes. I may have caught another big one, you know, but it is what it is. It was fun, had a good time. Can't wait to get back to Florida. One of us are fishing tomorrow. I don't know who's, who it's going to be. <laughs> We're having to review the footage. You can review the play in Major League Fishing. That is exactly what's going on right now to determine that last spot for who makes it into the championship round. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Mossy Oak. Hunt. Fish. Repeat. Abu Garcia. Fish to win. Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. And by Barbasol Shaving Cream and Razors, a close, comfortable shave for the past 100 years. Three pounds, four ounces. Hit him in the boot. We might have just done it. One pound, zero ounces. <laughs> yes! One pound bass, baby. Yes! Aunt Defoe has caught another fish. He has 13 pounds, 8 ounces. It's sudden death round one, and Mark Rose and Aunt Defoe crossed the 13-pound target weight within seconds of each other. With only one spot remaining, only one will advance to the championship round. One of us are fishing tomorrow. I don't know who's, who it's going to be. Who is it? The Barbasol close shave goes to today's photo finish. After checking both cameras, the time code revealed that Rose hauled in his bass 26 seconds before Ott's, making Mark Rose the final qualifier to advance to the championship round. Good job, Otter. Man, Rose, good job to you, buddy. Something I appreciate else. it. I've been yeah. in about every position in Major League Fishing except a photo finish. <laughs> Me I, too. I guess we've been Me in too. them all now. Yep. It wasn't quite as stressful for the winner of today's sudden death round. Jesse Wiggins wasted no time on Lake Toho and flew past the target weight before the end of period one. First out, first period. Let's catch up with Jesse Wiggins and check out his winning baits in Bass Pro Shops, end of the line. I'm Jesse Wiggins, and this is how I won the sudden death round here on Lake Toho. So this is the setup I use. These are the jerk baits. This is a pro green jerk bait here, and it's a shallow diver, dives to about five foot, and this is the pearl blue shad color. And uh, this is what I caught them on in the elimination round, and here's what I caught them on today on Lake Toho. The setup is a St. Croix Legend Tournament 6'9 medium heavy, the perfect action rod for a jerk bait. Uh, the line, 12 pound fluorocarbon, and then a Quantum Smoke S3 8 to 1 gear ratio reel. Yes! Boom! First out. And that's the setup. I I've used it uh, all week here this week, and it's worked out really well and caught a lot of fish. That's it right there. Mm. Love you, jerkbait. Love you, Florida. With today's win, Jesse Wiggins is advancing to the championship round. He'll be joined there by Michael Neal, Mike Iaconelli, and Mark Rose. The bottom five anglers will be heading home. The Berkeley Big Bass of the Day goes to Mark Rose. He landed this six-pound, two-ounce lunker, ensuring his survival in today's sudden death round. Oh, yeah, baby! Woo! Come and get you some of that. Let's send it over to Marty Stone, who's with our final qualifier, Mark Rose. You're talking about having a flair for drama. When I say the last man in, never in Major League Fishing history have I ever seen one come down to 26 seconds. That's, thank the good Lord's all I can say, Marty. Every time I see you at the end of one of these, you're always smiling at me because I, I make it Something interesting all the time, and today sure was interesting, but we got it in there. We're going to the championship round. I hate it for Ott. He, you know, it was a hard-fought day by both of us, and uh, just thankful that I got in. Two key fish today, six-pounder and three-pounder. Yeah. Six-pounder really did some damage for you. Three-pounder got you in. Talk about those two separate fish. These fish, I know somewhere this time of year on this lake are ganged up, and I just couldn't find it. I was hunting for it all day, and so I came back in the area where I started, and I said, I'm gonna pick up this little five-inch KVD Perfect Plastic Finesse Worm, and I threw it up there by a little patch of grass. 
caught that six pounder. So that moved me up, got me into the fourth place spot. And then I got in the area and just the clouds and the rain and the wind came. And I said, I couldn't work that little worm because it's a lightweight. It's a slow fall presentation. So I picked up the swim bait and just went back to whaling. And the same area where I caught those fish this morning, I got the one that I needed finally. Mark Rose, always a guy of flair for drama. 26 seconds on the good side. Now he's heading a championship round. Make sure you tune in next week for Sudden Death Round 2 of the USAA Insurance Patriot Cup, presented by Berkeley from Kissimmee, Florida. Until then, thanks for watching General Tires Major League Fishing. Hit him in the boot.